Please join me in welcoming Mr. Ron Howard, Lynn Brennan, Joe Johnson, Phil Tippett, Dennis Murin, and Rose Dagnan. Returning with ILM was, of course, great with, with special effects, although it was exciting to see that, uh, you know, some of the, some of the breakthrough uh, ideas in, in sort of technology were beginning to present themselves. Yeah, they started on solo. And they did start yeah. on solo. You mentioned one of the, the, the innovations that ILM was doing on solo. Do you have an example? Well, this is the, sort of the beginning of the volume. We had a version of that uh, for the Millennium Falcon. Cockpit. We had LED screens for the the jump into hyperspace. Um, we had th that generated on the screen, so we got lots of shots in camera, which I think is is the is the key to stagecraft. Definitely solved a, a, a problem because it, you know you didn't have to talk the actor through this scene, and it was there for them. You had a really great working relationship with Ralph McQuarrie that I would love to hear a little more about. Ralph always let me have the final word on what the design was. And as he was, as he, but he would take sometimes my drawings, my designs, and sketch them up and send them back to me. And I would, I would change them. You know, it was, it was a really uh, symbiotic relationship where we would just sort of feed off each other's ideas. I think that there is this sense of if you're not a computer graphics whiz or um, that, that there's no place for you in visual effects. But actually, we have, we have fine artists, we have sculptors. Yes, we have some actual rocket scientists and, and um, computer gra graphics whizzes, but we also have fashion designers. And there is, it doesn't matter where your t what your talent is, there is a place for you in the visual effects um, business. How has 3D printing effective because before you to you had to um, hand sculpt figures but now you can just print them out so yeah it? it's, well, uh, it's been huge you can 3d print out negative molds you know and um if you're doing like uh we're doing a bunch of stop motion stuff for um you know the mandalorian even for concept you know you can do concept art in 2d you can do 2d on a, on a, a uh, computer screen or whatever but then just take it the next step and print it out as a concept. And everybody learns so much more from it, being able to hold it up and look at it and seeing it in different light and everything. It's really valuable. Is there any technology that's currently, you know, spurring new ideas that have you guys fascinated? A lot of AI technologies, you know, figuring out how we can automate and really um, get get more natural reactions from characters that we make. Anything you want to put on a screen is possible to to capture. Even if you go back to the days of building a model and you know shooting it against a blue screen, it's a it's a tool for telling a story. What's really interesting is you guys have all been here at LIM from the start, and so now there is a new generation of directors like Bryce Dallas Howard who's being kind of hailed as the best of this franchise in a way. So how does that feel, getting to see who comes into the franchise now and kind of takes over at ILM and bringing these stories to life? It's a joy to, to work with, with um, new people all the time, it's particularly people like Bryce and like Deb Chow and, um, and people who come in with new uh, approaches, new perspectives and... Um, when we're filming on a stagecraft volume, for example, that is something that is a very different way of filmmaking. And um, seeing the enthusiasm um, that people embrace um, uh, such a different way of, of filmmaking and then add to it. That's what I always find so gratifying about um, the series space because we get to work with more directors in the series, in, in the episodic space, and they each bring a different perspective and, uh, and, and make it better every single time. And that, that is what is so wonderful. And um, um, Bryce is a perfect example of it. You know, Martin Scorsese uh, once said, if you want to know the future of filmmaking go visit George Lucas and Industrial Light and Magic, which I thought was such a mm. compliment. But I think this, mo this series is all about that because George Lucas set out to revolutionize the process of filmmaking, and that has been done. It's 
digital. You can do anything. Just piggybacking off what Rachel said about Bryce, Ron, when you saw her first episode of The Mandalorian that she directed, how did you react? How did you feel? She loves what's happening, you know, in getting in to work with with uh, with with John and Dave and 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 and, and you know and and everyone at Lucasfilm. Um, it, it's uh, she's learning a lot. She's growing a lot, and she can feel it. And um, and and uh, she also loves the fact that, that you know it's a it's a it's a show that has it has ideas, but it really is for the fans. It really is to try to connect with the audience, and that there's a very cl a clear cut. There's a respect for that audience, and and I there's that gives her something to kind of understand and aim for that she feels uh, that she likes. I was curious what kind of conversations or debates happen in determining what becomes digital effects and what becomes practical effects. Well, I think we can all probably answer this one. Um, I, I think um, we have a we have a constant mantra with within um, ILM and Lucasfilm, best tool for the job, right? And so it all comes back to what is the emotional connection you want to make in the scene, and what's the best way to get that. Um, and that that can be how do you get the the best um, performance out of uh, the talent on screen, um, and then how can you best execute the moment that you want to tell in the story? And so, different tools do that better. You know, there there are moments in the Mandalorian where Grogu is a, is a puppet, and adorable and um you know and we we can achieve the story point with 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 a puppet and then you know have that interaction with the with the actors on the screen and have that immediate response and then there are times when you can't do it um practically and you have to do it digitally but um because of the action that that needs to take place and that's where you see the magic i think within ilm the fact that they're able to get get that emotional feeling and living and breathing um, response within um, within a digital character um, and that just happens to be the right choice to make for that that particular to particular shot and then it's, so it's a constant conversation with with um, the director um, with the visual effects crew with the practical crew and as to what what is the best best approach that's going to achieve that that moment Ron and Joe, you guys have been directing movies through these various almost generations of technology available. How has having all of these tools in your toolbox changed your job now that you can seemingly do anything? Well, uh, you know, for me, it is that possibility of kind of whatever's in your, your mind, whatever is in the mind's eye, you have a much better chance of, of actually realizing that. But there are some other practical factors. Um, you, you know, uh, being able to help suggest uh, an environment that you that you know uh, a, on a, on an exterior shooting day, you you may not quite get the feeling that you want, but you can if you get close to it. Uh, digital effects can help you sort of com complete the image in a way. Or if you only capture it for a fleeting period of time, but you must finish the scene for practical reasons that day, you can go ahead and finish and you have a, have a much better chance of actually creating the continuity. Also, many stunts are suddenly made much, much safer, uh, simply because it's, it's, it's not a big deal, this is not fancy, this is not wildly creative, but to take wires out and do that wire removal, well, that makes a lot of very difficult stunts, you know, much safer and even possible for actors to do themselves. Um, you know, that's, uh, th that's exciting. Still, you do have this creative conversation because, um, you know, when, when, uh, when, um, when, when actors uh, can, can deal with something in a tactile way, of course it's much, you know, it's much simpler for them. Uh, it's going to feel like a more honest moment. Sometimes the textures of sets and so forth like are, are uh, easier to deal with, better to deal with, better for cinematographers to light, better for, again, actors to be able to interact with, lean against, uh, and, and so forth. So all of those kinds of decisions come into play. And then there's the question of money, because sometimes it's, uh, you know, it's a huge savings to do it digitally, or sometimes it's a huge savings to find a location that already exists and make a, a small extension or build physically. So, you know, it's just, as you said, 
you know, right, right, right tool for the job. Joe, what would you say? Well, I always try to keep that vision like it's made out of rubber because when you, when you start shooting a movie, it's never going to be exactly what you thought it was going to be. And, and it's, you know, something's going to break every day and things are going to go wrong or an actor's not going to show up. And if you can sort of keep your, keep it, keep it very flexible, then sometimes you can determine, hey, is this a, how should I do this? Should I, should this be a, a, a puppet or should the shot be in, be in the movie at all? Or should it be a shadow on the wall that goes by and you don't even know what it is? So, um, and it's, it's sort of a different answer, but you, d I just try to keep everything sort of loose and, and, uh, know that I'm going to find a way to get the shot or get the performance or get the, you know, complete the scene. Yeah.